OK, so we're going to solve this problem where we've got lattice points in 3D, so just points where all of the coordinates are integers. And we need to work out how many of these points we need to have in our set, in our collection, so that it guarantees that the midpoint between two of our points must also be a lattice point. It must also have all integer coordinates. And we'll solve this problem by first considering it in 1D, building up to 2D and then 3D, and at the end we'll also consider the n-dimensional case. So working in one dimension, the analogous problem would just be picking integers. How many integers do we need so that the midpoint between a pair of our integers is also itself an integer? So in 1D, the midpoint between two integers, let's say a and b, is just given by a plus b over 2. And you can think with some examples, if we just draw a number line, you could have, for example, 0 and 2, the midpoint between those would work, or 0 and 4, or between 1 and 3. And we start to realise, actually, it's just to do with the parity of our integers, that if both of them are even, then their sum divided by 2 is going to be an integer, or if both of them are odd, then the sum divided by 2 is also going to be an integer. So here, if we have two odd numbers, or if we have two even numbers, then this guarantees that their midpoint is going to be on our lattice, it's going to be an integer. So we only actually need three integers in our set in one dimension to guarantee that we'll have one of our midpoints is also going to lie on this lattice. Because if you had only two, you could have an odd number and an even number. But then by the time we add a third integer, it either has to be odd or even, which means that there will be a pair with the same parity so that their midpoint also lies on our lattice. It's also an integer. So in one dimension, the answer is three. So moving up to two dimensions, once again, let's imagine we have now A, B, and we've got C, D as our points on this lattice grid. So these points with integer coordinates. The midpoint between these two points is just going to be A plus C over two and B plus D over two. So once again, we need our X coordinate and our Y coordinate for the midpoint to lie on our grid to both be integers. So in this case, we actually need A and C to have the same parity, but we also need B and D to have the same parity. So there are a few more possibilities. You could have two odd numbers, or you could have an odd and an even, an even and an odd, or two evens. But by the time we add a fifth pair of coordinates into this scenario, it guarantees, because there are only four possibilities, it would guarantee, let's say now we add in another odd even pair. If you have an odd and an odd as your x coordinates, the midpoint between those is going to be an integer, and similarly for an even and an even for our y coordinate. So adding in a fifth pair of coordinates guarantees that at least one of the midpoints between our pairs of coordinates is going to lie on our grid, that it'll have integer coordinates. So in one dimension the answer is we need three, and in two dimensions, the answer is we need five. So now we'll have a look at 3D and finish by looking at n dimensions. So in 3D, we find the midpoint between two points in the same sort of way. So for this example, the midpoint between these points will have coordinates a plus d over 2, b plus e over 2, and c plus f over 2. So in order for all of these to be integers, you need the parity of a and d to be the same, you need b and e to be the same, and you need C and F to be the same. So how many different combinations are there for the parity of each of our coordinate entries in 3D? Well, we could try and list them all, odd, 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 even, and so on, but a quicker way of doing this would be to notice that there are two possibilities for A, so for each of these there are another two possibilities for B, and finally for all of these we get two possibilities for C. So we just do two cubed, or there are eight total, combinations of parities for each of our three coordinate entries. So then it is possible in three dimensions to have eight points in our set, all of which have slightly different combinations of odd and even and coordinate entries, so that the midpoint between any two points isn't going to have all integer coordinates. But as soon as we add a ninth point into our set, this guarantees that at least two of our points will have the exact same combination of parity, for each of the coordinate entries, which guarantees then that each of the coordinates, the midpoint between those two points, will be an integer. So the answer to our original problem in three dimensions then is 9. And just thinking about this now in general for an n-dimensional scenario, 
in n dimensions, our coordinates x1, x2, going up to xn, we've got n different coordinates there. And for each of these, you've got two possibilities, odd or even, multiplied by another two, and so on. So there's going to be two to the n different combinations for the parity of each of our n coordinate entries. So if we have two to the n points in our set, it is possible that none of them have the exact same combination of odd and even coordinate entries in the same place, so that the midpoint between any pair of points there isn't going to have all integer coordinates. But as soon as we add another point, so as soon as we have 2 to the n plus 1, then this guarantees that there will be a pair where all of the coordinate entries have the same parity, so that the midpoint between those two points is going to have integer coordinates and would lie on this n-dimensional lattice.